Hey everyone! <laughs> it's Rita from Miss Rita to the Rescue for today's cricket chat. Um, I was looking at my calendar. You know, this is, uh, if you don't include the week that I couldn't do the show, this is the week, the week seven of cricket chat. Week seven, it's almost two months of doing these um, live daily shows, and I'm so happy that they've been well received. I really enjoy it, um, and I love just thinking about ways to kind of get you excited about cricketing and to talk to you. Hi, Linnea. Good morning. Hi, Lori Joe. So, and Lynn, hello. Good morning. Um, and Susan, hi, hi, Midge. And so if you're not able to get this live, like all my friends, Peggy, hi, and Jan, oh, from England, Liverpool, nice. Hi, Nancy, uh, and Christine, good morning. So if you're not able to get catch this live, did you know that I replay them um, on my YouTube channel, which you can find at Miss Rita to the Rescue, and then I also um, leave them on my Facebook page. I usually pin them. Hi, Penny. I'm having a great morning. How about you, Constance? Good morning. Um, and so I replay them on YouTube, on Miss Rita to the Rescue, and then on my Facebook page, Miss Rita to the Rescue. And then also I post them in my groups. I have um, seven different groups that are that are Miss Rita or Cricket. Um, and I'm not sure if you know about them, but there's bound to be a, a group for you to join. We have one for the maker and explore we have one just for joy um that's a brand new one we have a community group miss rita to the rescue community group and we also have one for people who use the older machines because you can learn things um through this even though we do design space you know we have one exclusively for business and I'm trying to think what else. And then, of course, you know, for kitchen things, I have it in the kitchen with Miss Rita. Um, and that one's fun. That's my little pet project. Good morning, Teresa. Hi, Bren. So good morning to everyone. This morning, I thought we would tackle holographic iron on. Um, <clears throat> it's one of the... Uh, it's one of the kind of what I would call specialty iron-ons uh, from Cricut. There's holographic, there's holographic sparkle, there's of course glitter, um, and then holographic comes in like kind of a, a like a mosaic, it's sort of a patterned. Um, there's just all kinds of different um, different kinds of iron-on. Good morning, Dorothy. Hi, Terry. Hi, Terry. Good morning. Um, there's all kinds of, of uh, iron-on, not just the straight colors, and it can be a little bit confusing because there's an express iron-on, um, there is a, a sport flex iron-on, uh, glitter, I'm trying to think, patterns, all of that. Holographic iron-on, um, first of all, I just love holographic stuff. Um, I have, you know, I have an Etsy shop and I and I love Corgi. So this is something that actually I think it's the only thing in my Etsy shop. It's it's a mandala of a Corgi, a Pembroke Corgi that I do in the vinyl. Um, and this is a whole lot of fun and, and it lasts a really long time. I was concerned when I first got it if it wouldn't last a long time, but I've had one like this on my car for three years and it still looks brand new. So, um, and I leave my car, I don't garage my car. So um, I'm pretty sure that this holographic vinyl is pretty long lasting, comes in a bunch of different colors, as does this iron on. Um, but it, the iron on is a little bit different to work with. So here I've got the cobalt. Um, I cut out some things in cobalt 
and this one here is blue and which kind of confused me a little bit so I thought I would this is blue and this is cobalt and so here the difference here and you know holographic gives off a different color and everything um, how do you find your kindness matters SVG I do have that and I can post it for you Constance um, and it's free yes of course it's free um, it's kindness matters that I did a while ago um, I probably should round up all my SVGs and put the file somewhere on my page of things that I do I think that's a good it's a good project for me to do this summer. So thanks for reminding me. Okay, Constance. Hi, Wanda. So anyway, so there's a lot of um, holographic and different types of vinyl. So I want to just show you, when you do a search for holographic iron-on, you get all of these. You get a couple of samplers. So here's the one that we're playing with today, holographic iron-on. It actually comes in... Um, one, two, three, six different colors. And I don't know about you, but it, like this is shows as a blue, but it looks really pink to me. And then they have like this one is called Dahlia. It's kind of purpley. This is the cobalt. And then they have, um, this is red. It doesn't look red. So I think you have to really look at, and this is translucent red. So this translucent red, this is red. I don't know. It's a little strange. So sometimes you have to see it to understand the way that it is. And then in addition to that, they have some samplers. There's a mosaic circle one. And of course they have the um, sparkle. And here's another sampler. This is this one. It's called Berry Sorbet. And it has these three colors. I, I don't know. I guess it's sort of like... Um, because it moves around and everything, you know? Um, but I want to sh show you how to work with it, how to use it, how to apply it to your, um, to your substrates. And uh, remember last week we did these, these iron-on cases. Uh, I'm going to do that today. And the reason why I'm doing that, I'm going to do some colors, is that I think that the iron-on looks a little different when you put it on color. So we're going to try different colors here. This one here I did this morning. Um, this one here is the this is the cobalt, which I would say is kind of pink, you know? Um, looks really cute. And this is the uh, blue. So it gives a nice shiny reflective thing. It was um, a little different to weed and a little different to iron on. I'm going to turn my irons on um, for right now just so we can get started when, when the time is right. So um, there are a little bit, there are a few different things that you need to do with holographic iron-on and I think it's because if you do it too hot it kind of wrinkles and this does not wrinkle but I had a hard time right here with this right in between the letters here so I had to go back and keep hitting it and I noticed that there's right here is kind of a little bit of a like kind of a wrinkling whereas over here no wrinkling so you do have to um you do have to follow the directions, but be very, very careful when you're peeling it, especially if you have this sort of thing with these little dots and what have you. You gotta make sure you hit those with the, the heat press. And peeling is the number one, to me, the number one thing that, um, that I have very little patience for because I want to peel it right away. And when you're using the the um, holographic, let me show you, this I put on holographic for my Easy Press 2 on a cotton canvas. And, hey, 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 hey. 
and it has to be on 285, which is pretty low. Uh, the foils are a lot like that too. It's, it's pretty low um, for a little bit longer, 30 seconds, and you do a cool peel. So you have to wait until it cools off for it to peel because it has to sort of like release from the transfer tape. I hope that makes sense. So. I'm going to also give you, by the way, the uh, file that I used, which, let's see if I can show you. So I found these three really cute, um, uh, these really cute images. These are all from Design Space, and if you ha have access, they're free. Um, yeah, you can hear my doggies. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so... I have found these under, I think it was, on, they were under empowering. Um, and if you go to images and you type in, you know, I, I found this out yesterday. If you type in under image set, if you type in the word T hyphen shirts, you can come, you come up with 30 different um, image sets of t-shirts. So if you're ever at a loss looking for something for t-shirts, which is, this is where I found this. And granted, I'm not doing it on a t-shirt, but it was, you know, kind of perfect. It's Empowering Phrases t-shirts. And you can find, um, you can find them also by typing in like the words like kind, um, and here we go, explore kind is cool, rise and shine. This is like the reverse rise and shine. That's that's the one I used, right? So you can find them that way by, uh, by looking for t-shirts under image sets. Um, this is, okay, so to find, so people are asking about the heat and the heat press. So here's where you go for this heat guide. And I really think you should bookmark this if you're interested in doing iron on, even if you do it all the time, because it's really a fabulous guide. And as they add more products, so I just Google under Google, I type in Cricut heat guide. And this comes up and it's like an interactive guide. You choose which heat press you want to use. Now, if you have a non Cricut heat press, um, you're going to have to try to guess. I would say if it, I would probably choose the easy press too. If you have a, like a, another manufacturer's heat press. And if you're using a household iron, I probably would use um, the Easy Press Original or maybe even the Mini. So you choose which one, and then you choose the material. So here's the material. See all of those different kinds? There's Everyday, there's Mesh, there's that Express that we talked about, Foil, Fabric, Glitter, Glitter Mesh, Holographic, Holographic spa <laughs> Sparkle, Mosaic, then there are the designs, um, patterned, and that sports flex. So you have to choose which one. So I choose holographic. Um, so Teresa, let me get to that question in a second. So then, um, then I choose the base material. And so here are all the different bases that you can choose, right? And you can even do, one of the things that really surprised me is that you can put iron on, on cardstock, which I thought was really kind of cool. I tried it last year, worked out great. Um, it really was fun to do. And, uh, it, it was, there were a few little parameters there. Um, and also faux leather, you can do it on felt, nylon, silk, even wool, and wood. Um, so I think that's really fun. I think we should probably do a faux leather tutorial coming up. Um, and so we can talk about it because uh, faux leather cuts with the Joy and the other machines as well. And um, doing iron-on on faux leather sounds like a really fun thing to me. So in this case, we're doing 100% cotton and we hit apply. Whoops. We hit apply. And it tells us that the... Um, 
that the the temperature needs to be at 330 degrees for 30 seconds we do preheat we have to give it some light pressure and then the other important thing is we have to flip it over and do the other side oh man the dogs are really going crazy but this is the most important part is you have to let it cool um because cooling is really important okay and now, so Teresa's asking what's the difference between the Easy Press and the Easy Press 2. There's two differences, pretty much they're the same, but the um, Easy Press Original, the one that's like that deep teal color, which a lot of people have, um, it doesn't get as hot. It still works with infusible ink, but it doesn't go up to the temperature um, that the Easy Press two does okay um and not that that matters because they made adjustments for infusible ink and most of the time we're not even using the highest heat which is like 380 i think but um so there's that and what they did was they also played with the actual plate on the bottom to make sure the heat was even 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 so um they they kind of just improve that if you have the original easy press you don't need to get the easy press too um, unless you want to you know but um i have both just simply because they sent me them and uh, i would be perfectly happy using my original easy press um but if you want to use the the you know if you want to upgrade to easy it's sort of like the difference between an air Cricut Explore Air 2 and a Maker. There's just a few more like deluxe features. Mm, something you're probably not gonna notice if you're just doing everyday iron on, but maybe if you're like in, in a little small business, you might want the easy press, okay? Hey, Tamara, Tamara's here from the Netherlands. Say hello to Tamara. And yes, Susan, I will do faux leather. I was thinking about doing like um, earrings, even though I don't wear earrings, I think it would be fun to play with faux leather earrings with iron on. So we're gonna set that up maybe for next week. So here is the easy, easy press guide or the heat guide. Definitely bookmark this, okay? Um, and okay so and cindy's asking about a template so okay so let me show you again so i am using the cricut uh, ipad app but you can use your desktop ask app they're pretty much the same and i think that you're asking me about um let's see cindy i think you're asking me about where do i find the image the image that I'm looking for. So in this case, these ones here, these are all Cricut Design Space images, okay? So when I'm on the app or when I'm on, you know, on the desktop app, um, here we're gonna go down to image, image plus, right? So we do image plus, okay, hold on. And then it brings up this. This is our like image search engine. Um, you can search by the word that's used in the file. So you can type in, we, on this rise and shine, we can type in rise like this, and then it will give you all images that have the word rise and shine in it. Or you can go to the image sets. This is my favorite part of Design Space. Way, way back um, when they had cartridges and you linked them to your Design Space. Um, I had purchased a lot of cartridges and I know there are a lot of people out there too. And so um, they, they had linked their cartridges. So they changed the name. It's not called a cartridge anymore, um, but it's called an image set. And when you go here, there's a 3,100 plus um, image sets. And to search on the image sets, you have to search on the title of the set, okay? So you can't do that rise and just get anything that has rise in there. You have to search on the image sets. So in this particular case, what I did was a search for T hyphen shirts. And this came up with 30 different image sets that have 
t-shirts in it all different kinds of collections here and this one is the one that I used empowering phrase t-shirt so I click on there and this is where I found all of these images now for iron-on um, you the simpler the better you can layer iron-on I'm not sure if you can layer holographic but you can layer iron-on um, generally so images like this work hard and be kind you can see because there's different colors that there's one two three different colors to that that's a layered image Okay, um, and that's entirely possible to layer, and I'm going to show you how to do that. You can layer with vinyl, you can layer with, um, whoops, where did I go? You can lay with vinyl, you can layer with iron-on, you can do it. There are a few parameters when you're using stuff like glitter, like you can't have glitter, if you're layering, glitter can't be on the bottom, but it can be on the top. So if you have something uh, like, say that's two color like this one loud and proud um, the base layer would have to be a regular iron-on not glitter okay and probably not holographic and then the top one would be um, would be your glitter and then what you do is you press the the bottom one first and then you peel it off and then you press the second one over it and i'm going to show you how to do that in an in an upcoming video because like people love to do layered images but for today because we're working with a holographic i chose these images um, because they're single layer Okay, and so let's get to showing you how it cuts out and how to weed it. So um, this is a weeded cutout, the same one, Rise and Shine. And it's on this, you know, the plastic transfer sheet or whatever you want to call it. The I call it transfer sheet. So um, this is where it's at. I'm just my my uh there's a safety feature on the uh on the presses but I talk so much that I often have to restart them. So here is a um cutout that I did on holographic. This one is the cobalt. This is the cobalt. Now remember when you're cutting it out, you're going to put that shiny side on your mat. So like this, so here's your mat. You're gonna put the shiny side like this. Okay, press. So you put your shiny side like this on your mat, okay? And one of the things that you have to really be careful of is making sure that all the edges are stuck really good. And you can use like a little scraper to scrape it on. I'm gonna move you a little bit. Okay, you can use a little scraper to keep it on because oftentimes when it goes in the machine, if the edges are kind of lifting up here, then um, it interferes with the cutting of it. So you have to be careful about that and make sure that you have it on there really good and you can, you know, use something uh, to press it down or use a new mat or a cleaned mat okay so once you cut it and you're going to mirror 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 everything is mirrored this is the right side which is kind of filmy it's not like that matte okay so here's the wrong side putting that on the mat do a mirrored image and here's what it looks like it's very filmy Okay, it doesn't weed exactly the same way, but um, this, the principles are the same. I'm taking my, my Cricut weeding tool. You don't have to use. Um, that is a mat for the joy, Mary. Hi, jo Joy Lynn, what a beautiful name, um, from Tennessee. Thank you for coming. So, um, so it, yes, that was a joy mat, and you can cut this stuff on the Joy, you can cut it on the Explorer or the Maker, um, but it unless you're using the Smart Iron On, you can't cut it without a mat in the Joy. Okay, that's the difference. 
You absolutely can do glitter projects and I will do glitter projects for you. Um, so people often ask me about the font and the thing is I don't have a lot of fonts because I use a lot of pre-made images. And that's another project for upcoming day that I'm gonna show you how to build your own image um, using different fonts. But, so I don't know what the, the font is on this, but um, I can show you how to make your own, okay? That will be a different time. So here's what we do. We hook the corner of the um, the iron-on and then we peel the excess off like this all right and you'll notice that I still have little pieces here so that's where this comes in handy so I'm just going to use my my tool and I'm just pulling away these extra pieces. Don't forget the spaces in between letters, okay? And I find it useful to work from a flat surface. I actually don't usually um, weed on the mat because it's hard because you have the mat there, but I have it here because I wanna show you how to apply it, okay? So I'm just going in and I'm weeding away the um, extra pieces that are between my actual design. Whoops. Again, I would work on a harder surface than this. I'm tempted to change that. And this, again, it doesn't weed exactly the same way. It feels a little different. Let me show you what it feels like or what it looks like, it's kind of, it's it's a filmy. It's not like the other kind of iron-on which kind of stretches when you pull it off. And it's not like as little electrostatic either. Okay. All right, so that is on the reverse side, and this is what it looks like on the front side, okay? And this is the, how we're going to put it on the, um, on the project. Let me show you that again. So here it is, it's been cut in reverse because I mirrored it. It's been cut with the shiny side down on your mat, okay? So you have a reverse image, then you're going to take whatever weeding tool you have, and you're gonna hook. There we go. A little difficult to hook, but mm -mm -mm. So we're gonna hook it. And then start by pulling off the big pieces around your image. And you generally don't have to worry about anything lifting. Now, if you were doing this in vinyl, um, not only would you not mirror it, but you do sometimes with vinyl have to worry about the little tiny pieces coming off. Not so much with iron-on. So once you have got the major pieces cut out or pulled off, you're just going to go and use your hook and I usually do this on a flat surface, but I wanna show you up real close. You use the hook and you take out where it's cut. You see that? You take out those little pieces and don't forget like in the inside of E's. Here's an A. And there's a little loopy here under the L. And let's see more loops just make sure you you look at it look at it a couple of times because there's nothing worse than um, doing it and f seeing you forgot to take something out now most people would not notice you know most people wouldn't notice but uh, we crafters will notice it and we have a tendency to point out to people where our mistakes are don't do that if you're giving something as a gift, don't point out um, 
oh, here I made this mistake here, or, or the other pet peeve I have is when crafters say, it's not perfect. Right, it's not perfect. Perfect means it came off of a machine. And, um, and so there's perfection there, but you know, when you're doing something by hand, perfect is not really a word that you should be using, okay? So I'm going back to my heat guide and I'm going to use these, these three. I wanna show you the color difference and how it might look a little bit different on your um, colors versus on the white ones. So let's start off with the pink, how about that? So we're gonna put this Hello Beautiful on this pink one it's gonna look really cute again I go to my heat guide I make sure I choose holographic and this base material is 100% cotton and I choose the easy press mat and I'm going to do this at 330 degrees so I have to set my um, easy press um, it's out of the the um, camera so I'm going to show you that Let me move it over it's really hot so here's my easy press okay and what i've done is i've i've done the um the temperature to the 330 that i'm being told i should use it for my holographic on cotton so what i've done is i've changed the temperature and I hit the temperature button and I can go plus or minus. So it's right now heating up to 330. So you'll notice that the, that the little um, sign, insignia, the logo C is orange and now it's turned to green indicating that it's ready to roll, it's ready to go. And um, also you can change the time here by hitting on this little stopwatch and doing plus or minus. But I happen to have it on 30 seconds. So let me just move this out of the way for a quick second. So what we need to do is preheat for a five seconds, okay? Now, one of the things you have to worry about with an easy press that you don't have to worry about with the mini so much is that you have to worry about things like um, the edges where it's thicker and you're if you get your design too close to the edges or you or right here too close to the zipper it could cause contact problems so be aware of that especially if you're using the bigger machine and here we are we're going to do just five seconds i'm going to count one two three four five just preheating it to make sure that it's warm so it can accept our base material. And I'm just going to line it up to where I think would look nice. Try to center it. I think that looks nice. And then I'm going to take my press again and put it on there. See, I'm avoiding, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm avoiding that that uh, zipper over here. And I'm going to press my little... Um, my little cricket guy, whatever you call him. I'm gonna press that and it's starting to count down to the 30 seconds. Let's go back to the um, guide. So light pressure, so I do not have to press. I would recommend you don't move it around um, or if you move it around, pick it up and move it around if you're working with a bigger thing. But um, so 30 seconds light pressure, which I've just done, but then it says flip and peel for 15 seconds. So we're gonna do that. Flip. And we can do this if we want to count down the 15 seconds. There's no harm in doing that. And again, I'm not pressing, pressing down, even though it's called an easy press. I'm not putting a lot of pressure um, on it, I'm just doing for 15 seconds on the back side. Now, here's the hardest part for me, is waiting for it to cool. Because when, if you allow, if you try to do this now, um, first of all, it's really super hot and it will hurt your hands. But if you try to do it now, um, it may not 
lift off correctly because my easy press guide, I'm sorry, my heat press guide, it says I need to wait and do it at cool. Generally speaking, the cooler is usually better. Um, and so even though you're excited and want to do this, um, it's a little bit, it's a little bit of a waiting game to make sure that it's cooling off. So this is feeling like it's cooling off, but again, I'm probably rushing it. Where's my other ones here? I guess maybe while we're waiting, I can do um, this. Actually, I'm gonna use my mini for the next one. So here's my mini, and I have that on a two. Minis have these three little wavy lines. So when you're using the heat guide, it will tell you which wavy line. So this, the two is medium and three is high. And then there's also low. And the mini, though it looks like an iron, is really a very powerful, if you want to call it an iron, it's a very powerful iron. I've actually used it to iron things in my home. Um, but... And I've also used it when I do sewing. It's great for sewing. So I'm just wrinkling, I'm taking out the wrinkles here while I wait for that to cool off. Okay. So let's see if it's cool. It's cool now. So let's um, go ahead and start to peel. Now when I peel, I wanna show you, make sure it's in the camera. Yes, you can use the mini press, okay? And I found the makeup bags on Amazon, okay? Um, I think, and I can try to post a link. I think I got like 12 of them for under, I think they were about $15, and they came in the colored, and they came in the, uh, the white. So in the color, it doesn't come in one straight color, but it came in uh, like a bunch of different ones. There's green, pink, blue, yellow, red. And then you get the white ones. Okay, so I'm seeing as I'm starting to peel this, and this is how I peel it. I start at the corner and I start peeling like really, really slowly because I want to be cognizant of if there's a certain, like especially when you're using something like this very, you know, very wavy script, there are always little pieces that you have to go back and hit because they just didn't come off. So I've noticed here that that's the case with like this H, see that? This H is kind of lifting a little bit. So I'm gonna go back and do a little bit more heat. That's where the mini is good because even though I'm using, I use my press, um, my easy press, the bigger one, the mini's good because it might get into some of these little uh, areas a little bit better so especially when you're working with these very loopy loopy cursive designs all right I think that that's probably good let it cool a little bit still pretty hot Let's do the same design on the blue one, but using the mini. Gonna take off these little pieces that somehow made their way on my design. You don't want that or they'll be extra. Okay. Now the mini does not have a timer, so you have to, so, oop, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to preheat, darn, this is what happens. I can't take it off now, so I don't wanna do that. But preheating is important and I do often forget it, which is why I use that um, heat guide so much and love that heat guide. 
with the mini, you do move it around kind of in a circular fashion. And definitely with this kind of design, you need to make sure you're getting all those little loopies and the eye, the dots on the eye. Like look at this loop for the L. And you just really need to make sure you're getting all those places and you do it for the for the 25, I think it's 25 seconds with the mini on medium. All right. I think that's been 25 seconds. I'm gonna flip it over and do the back. With these makeup cases, you could put it like this if you wanted to. I don't think you'd need to, but if you're gonna decorate both sides, that's what you would do. You'd use it the other way. So if I wanted to put something on both sides, like a name, if I was giving these away as gifts and I wanted to put like to a team or something, you know, and I wanted to put everybody's name on it, but give them the same gift and I want to do it on both sides, I would probably do that inside, okay? All right, so let's let that cool and I think that this one here, it must be done now. Yes, much cooler, easier to peel. I'm just walking my fingers along the design. And there is, on pink, there is the holographic blue. This is the blue. No, yes, this is the holographic blue. Isn't that pretty? Okay, and then I also have the Rise and Shine one that's in cobalt, so I'm gonna do that on one of these as well. It's starting to cool. So let's see how that's going. It's cool to the touch. Maybe that's how your guide is. So sorry, my phone rang. I have it on Do Not Disturb. I can never figure that out, why it's on Do Not Disturb and the phone calls come in. But anyway, so here it's nice and cool. Now this is the same color, that's blue, on blue, right? And you see it's very greenish. This one here looks bluish. And this one here looks, to me, looks greener. So there you go for that. <laughs> so let's do this is the cobalt one this is what it looks like on the back and again it's the same thing you know it weeds the same way you cut it out with the shiny side down and you're going to weed around these and make sure you get all those little tiny pieces okay which is what i've done here now this particular design has a lot of these little, what do I want to call them? There's like little like stars or diamonds and stuff, and these little uh, tiny drops, circles, which some of them I didn't even, I weeded them out because um, they're so small. So let's preheat. Again, we're going to go back to our easy guide, but we're going to choose mini. And we're gonna choose holographic and cotton and apply. And it tells me that I need to set it at medium, whereas this here is my two squiggly lines, All right? Medium, I'm gonna preheat for five seconds. I have a little, yeah. So preheat for five seconds. I don't like that this one here is a little, it's got a, crease in it <laughs> okay so I preheat for five seconds and then I'm going to put it on for 25 seconds using constant movement and light pressure then I'm going to flip it and do 15 seconds on the other side so here we go I line it up the way that I want to have it that looks good to me okay and then I take my mini and I start. Um, and when you're moving it around, make sure that you're not moving around your 
design, okay? And you really, really, especially for these little bits on the end and around it, you really need to make sure the entire part is hit with your machine and it's 25 seconds total, but um, I always give it a little bit longer because I'm moving it around. I don't know if that's accurate, but um, I just feel like it needs that a few extra seconds there. And one of the things that I had trouble with the first time I did this was the inside of the E and here at the S because it didn't want to stay. And that's okay, you can come back and hit it a little bit um, if while you're peeling it, it's it's sort of lifting, just like I did with that other, um, the Hello Beautiful one. Okay, so to me that's 25 seconds, give or take. Make sure I do that S and the E. Make sure I do these little guys here. I want them to show up. Okay, I gotta flip it. 15 seconds. On the flip side, on the flip side. Um, you know what, on an, uh, so Teresa's asking about an iron, an, like an ironing board. What I found with my ironing board is that um, it, it has a lot of give to it. The mat itself, it, it absorbs the heat, but the, um, the ironing board, when you're pressing, there's this opportunity for the, for the board to sort of move up and down a little bit. And I think that they would prefer it that you do it on a very sturdy surface so there's no movement and that's how they tested it like they didn't test it on the ironing board you may get okay results on the ironing board um and the pressure believe it or not even again it's called a heat press but the more important part is the heat the the name the heat so we're gonna let that cool while we do that let me just show you these again so there is our uh, pink, which I think looks kind of bluish, you know? This is bluey green, and this one looks way greener. If you look at it, it looks greener. This is the exact same holographic, and let's see, did I do this? Yeah. Here we go. So I did do this, this is the color on the uh, canvas, plain canvas, white, or I think it's more like a cream. This is the same color on pink, and this is the same color on blue. Let me show you those side by side so you can see. They do have a different hue to them, so that's something you should consider when you're doing these holographic is um, remember what color your base is going to be because it's going to bring up a different color. I remember when this first came out, people were doing it on red and it looked very orangey. And so they, you know, they were complaining because it looked very orangey, but with a red base, you know, um, it, that just, it reflected the redness of the base. Let's see how we're doing here. Okay, looks like it's gonna peel okay. And here we go. Oh, looks like it's coming off just great. I don't know why I had a problem before. Yay, something went right. And this is the cobalt color. So just kind of show you, this is blue and this is cobalt, blue and cobalt. And there it is, so pretty. I think it looks pink and blue when I turn it this way. So that's it for holographic um, iron-on, heat transfer vinyl iron-on. It's available at Cricut, um, and uh, it's on sale now. So if you go to place an order, definitely um, use my link. I'll drop it in the description of this video. But my link is something maybe bookmark because when you use it, 
and my code, which right now is Miss Rita 202, you um, save 10% and you get free shipping on orders over $50. So it's definitely doesn't cost you any more um, to use it and it helps me, but also it helps you because you save the 10% and who wants to pay for shipping, right? <laughs> So, yeah, they are pretty. So what we'll do is um, I'm going to put on my list that we're going to do a layered uh, heat transfer vinyl or iron-on. We're also going to do layered vinyl because people keep asking about that. Um, we'll, we'll do also glitter um, because people love glitter. I would love glitter. Um, what else can we do? Um, I'm going to, what did you guys ask me for? So we're going to do layered. We're going to do um, layered with glitter. And uh, we're going to do vinyl as well. And also I'm going to show you in a later video how to actually make your own design using the fonts, which there's one that I did um, earlier in the year called Kindness Matters. Thanks, Dorothy. Thanks, Paula, for coming. Um, print and Cut is coming, and you know what? I'm like dying because I'm waiting for my sticker paper, which I, I hadn't really given a whole lot of thought to. I want to just show you um, some of the designs that I started working with. Faux leather, iron-on on faux leather. Thanks, Wanda. I appreciate it. So I, I wanted to show you, I was working on these projects. Um, I found, look at these. Are these not the cutest things in the world? Um, <laughs> they're, they're like pairings, food pairings. Um, like, uh, let's see, a chip and avocado, like for guacamole, burger and fries, uh, peanut butter and jelly, eggs and bacon they're so cute and I never knew how to use them before so what I found out is that I can they some of them are all ready for print and cut some of them you have to flatten so I'm going to show you how to do that and I'm going to do print then cut with these on sticker paper and I have a niece that I know would love 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 them I also found let's see if I can find those real quick so we're going to do that I'm hoping that um I get my sticker paper today and then maybe we can do that tomorrow I still have to show you those great um those two one's a box card and one's a uh a layered card for dad that feature hamburger cheeseburgers um and then i want to show you some pride uh t-shirts for for this week since it is pride week pride month okay so thank you everyone for coming today sorry to go a little bit long but i want to make sure you get all of the details so you can understand this is easy you can do it okay you you don't have to be afraid or intimidated by it just because it's not your everyday iron on um it's super easy and fun to play with it and if you take your time and read the directions you'll come up with a great project thanks every oh you're welcome wendy um have a great day everyone it's a beautiful day here and i hope it's a beautiful day with you and um oh good i'm glad all right everyone i hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you again tomorrow morning and hopefully we'll be doing these print then cut on sticker paper because I am so hoping I get my sticker paper today. Thanks everyone. Have a great day.